Thank you for attending and welcome to this Permit Access webinar. Today's webinar is one of a number we are hosting, which together we call our Damage Prevention Series. Look out for more webinars in the series on our website. Throughout the webinar, if you have any questions, please feel free to click on the question mark at the top right and we'll do our best to answer it at the end. I anticipate the webinar will take approximately 30 minutes. Permit access is fairly simple to use, however, it also has quite a bit of functionality, which we'll, we will be demonstrating today. My name is Richard Dyson, and I'm the Before You Dig Business Development Manager for New Zealand, and it's my pleasure to be hosting this webinar today. Joining me today will be Jacinta Burns, our Permit Access product owner, who will be giving us a run through the application. Jacinta referenced the Coptum code as her requirements definition for the initial development of permit access, and we keep close tabs on any changes to the Coptum code, and we modify permit access accordingly to maintain compliance. Today's agenda will start with a brief overview of our company, of permit access product positioning, a demo of the key features, and the benefits of permit access, and lastly, any questions and answers. Before You Dig is the brand by which our damage prevention business in New Zealand is known. And Before You Dig is owned by our parent company, Pelican Corp, which is headquartered in Melbourne. Pelican Corp provides similar damage prevention services to markets in Australia, Canada, several states in America, the UK, Ireland, the Netherlands and Singapore. And our mission is to expand our suite of damage prevention services to the global market and share technology developments from one geography with the rest of the world. Permit access is one such example, developed for the New Zealand market for road corridor permitting and now being implemented with councils in Australia where there is no overarching Coptum code to guide them. So what is permit access? Permit access is designed to manage safe working in the road corridor by allowing contractors to lodge corridor access requests and submit traffic management plans to the local roading authority. It also manages the council process of receiving and review reviewing corridor access requests, collaborating with the applicants and issuing approvals. Permit access receives the bulk of its corridor access requests directly from the Before You Dig service which contractors use to request plans before excavation works. If the Before You Dig inquiry is for design purposes, then a provisional car can be created, alerting councils to future planned works. Contractors can also apply for a corridor access request via our public portal, corridoraccess.co.nz, for non-excavation works, for example, tree trimming, road painting, public events for road closures, etc. Here are some of the benefits of permit access. Firstly, increased road reserve visibility. Receive notification of road reserve activity automatically into permit access without being reliant on the applicant to approach council by other means. Increased road maintenance savings. Reduce council road maintenance costs for damages or poor reinstatements by contractors by knowing who has been working where and when. Increased revenue. You charge a permit fee to recover costs for corridor access requests. And we know from experience that when we capture the corridor access requests from before you dig and from corridoraccess.co.nz, and apply the appropriate fees that your revenue is likely to increase because of increased uh, usage. Time savings. With an automated solution like this, with, with workflows end to end, it means greater efficiency and time savings for your internal staff overhead. Full audit trail. We provide a complete historical view of all permit applications for future reference, for example, retrospective damage, third party claims or reinstatement activity. Management reporting. You're able to extract information and there are some 
reports provided with permit access which increase management visibility and effective corridor management through the on-demand on report process. And lastly, business continuity. A centralized system which allows multiple users to access and manage permits and perform easy handovers, ensuring council is not dependent on one person being at their, at their job to provide the service. Now I'll ask Jacinta to join the webinar and give us a demonstration of the uh, features of permit access. Thank you, Jacinta. Permit access allows local governments to configure certain parts of the corridor access request process so that each local government has all the information required to make a decision about approving their applications. Each local government can configure settings such as application fees, as well as the documents that are needed to be sent to their applicants prior to approval. Commonly, these can include standard or engineering drawings, requests for additional information such as traffic management plans, proof of insurance or qualifications and accreditation, or any other documents required by your code of practice. These documents and requests are made automatically available to the applicant once the application has been generated. The applicant can download these documents and upload responses to be reviewed um, and approved by the road authority. Each local government can also upload their conditions, the rules under which an application is approved. Those standard to every application be, can be treated as part of the workflow mentioned earlier, but those that are specific to a location, time, date or type of works can be loaded in and then selected on a need by need basis as each application has been reviewed. Once your configuration is complete and we turn on your organisation to receive notifications through the Before You Dig service, you'll start receiving those corridor access request notifications for works taking place within your municipality. Then you'll see them in the Permit Manager piece and the applicant will be able to access them through what we call Permit Monitor, the component that they can then use to respond to these applications and communicate with you. So we'll move over in a moment to show you what your applicants will see, just to give you a bit of an idea of how simple it is for them to respond to the information that you're sending to them and to ask any questions that they have of you. Permit Monitor, the piece used by the applicants, sits off as part of the Before You Dig service. It simply is another tool shown on the dashboard page. The applicant will see a list of all corridor access requests that they've made regardless of what council or local government area the application is made in. So long as they are using our permit access application, we'll show them listed here. We put the newest application on top and provide tools to applicants so that they can easily find a particular job that they're looking for to provide more details on. When the contractor opens up an application, they too see some of the details from the Before You Dig service, as well as some requests for some additional information that is specific to a corridor access request. Most of these fields are drop downs in an attempt to assist in creating the process to be as smooth as possible for your contractors. This information gives you, as the road owner, de more detail regarding information such as the actual duration of the works, the traffic management plans and site plans, as well as key on-site contacts. So it's a fairly simple process. You can see here where I'm just simply selecting some of the information that is relevant to what it is that my works are doing, and I can save that. There's a tab over here on the left called documents, which allows the applicant to view those standard documents that you set up and had automatically sent to them as part of the application process. 
So you're not having to manually send through documentation for each application. Permit access will do that for you. The applicant simply needs to download each document. And once they've downloaded it and they've read the request, they have the opportunity here to upload a response back to you. This means that their contractor can start understanding what additional information you need and respond at any time of the day. There's also a tab that allows for messages to be shared between the parties. No more searching your inbox looking for a particular email or if you're not available, that email is unavailable to your entire organisation. These messages can have attachments, so your applicants could potentially be sending things through like photographs of the work site, or you could be sending them through additional information using that service. As you review the information provided back, such as the additional documents or fields of information that have been provided, the applicant receives updates via email to let them know when milestones are met, such as when the application has been approved or if blockers come up, such as a document has been rejected by council for not providing sufficient information. When a new application arrives, it can be found via the dashboard view. This shows applications filtered to, by those assigned to the logged in user or all applications that have been received across your local government area. Table and map views are provided so users can see visually where all those works take place. An individual application can be opened and assessed. Much of the detail provided on this original page is passed across to us from the Before You Dig service. Permit access was built on a platform of collaboration. For example, the work dates can be negotiated with the local government proposing alternative dates for the application. So if there's an example where an applicant has chosen dates where there's already works taking place on that particular section of road, you can propose an alternative set of dates back to the applicant. The permit access application process requires that the traffic lights running down the left, here where you can see them, are all moved from red to green. All lights must be green prior to approval of a corridor access request. The road authority has the flexibility to action these lights in any order. For example, if you've cho chosen to charge a permit application fee, you may choose to action your payment section first. If a particular component of the workflow is not required for an application, it can be flagged as not required. So say we've got works taking place internally, you may choose not to charge your own organisation a permit fee. If that's the case, you can simply choose to click the not required button. Once something is made not required, it is not counted towards the mandatory green lights. The prerequisite section over here on the left allows the local government staff to review the documentation that has been provided to you by your applicants. So we can easily download the response that we've received, review its content, and then we can either verify or reject each document. Additionally, as we've touched on earlier, here under the conditions, you can see all of the clauses that we uploaded earlier as part of our setup. To create a specific document for a particular application, it's as simple as selecting those clauses that are relevant. They can come from any page and then we can create a simple PDF document that is sent through to the applicant. 
that document is then downloaded and accepted by the applicant so that you know they're aware of these additional conditions under which the work can take place. Next, we'll have a look at the traffic management section. Here's where we can see the information that the contractor has provided to us. This section is not meant to be a replacement for a traffic management plan. This is just a simple overview of some of the key features of the road type that's being impacted and the type of works that are taking place. So your tasks here are as simple as either to confirm the information is accurate or you can edit it as required. So we'll quickly just edit that one, but we'll confirm the other one is correct. And you can see as we undertake these tasks, our traffic lights have moved from red to amber to green. So if we now go in to contacts, we can see the contact information that's been provided. So contacts in the context of permit access are the key people involved in the works. For example, a temporary traffic management contractor. So who is responsible for the traffic management plan and its implementation on site? You can have a civil contractor who's actually responsible for the works taking place in that location, or you can have the principal contact who's basically paying the bill. So what we can do here is see the details of who these contacts are and acknowledge we've received that information. You're not approving their choice of contract, you're simply acknowledging that you can see who it is and that that information's been provided to you. So here on the schedule page, you can see we've now been provided with information regarding the duration of the works. So on the 29th of April this year, there'll be an intention for a seven hour closure of that intersection. So if we're happy with that, we've got that option here to approve those dates. And as we approve those dates, you can see here that our schedule has gone to green. Until each of these traffic lights is either green or made not required, I don't have the ability to approve these works. You'll see here that that has errored. So I'm still waiting on my contractor to download and approve the conditions document. And once that's done, I'll be able to approve those works. There are some other statuses available to me here. So for example, I could reject the application if for whatever reason, I don't think it should be going ahead. I've also got the option to choose permit not required. So for example, if I reviewed that site of works and discovered that the road actually belonged to NZTA, I've got the opportunity to, to close the works request at any time and send back a notification to the applicant to say that they don't actually require a permit application or a corridor access request from my organisation. The final option we have here is called a service authority acceptance. So what that allows me to do is it allows me to fast track the process for approving works being done on behalf of a service authority, a utility such as Chorus, for example. So rather than necessarily having to go through the entire list of traffic lights and get them to green, so long as Chorus and I can agree on the start and end dates of their works. I can pop the work into a service authority accept service authority acceptance acceptance fast tracks the application through to the status where it still requires the applicant to let me know when the works are starting and ending so I can still interact with the works and know that they're happening, but it doesn't require me to follow up on details such as payments, conditions and so forth, which may not be required under your code of practice. Okay, now you can see that our contractor has had the opportunity to download and accept our conditions and all our traffic lights are green, except the payment option, which we earlier made not required. So now I've got that opportunity to approve these works. 
because of the way we have set up our workflows and documents for this particular instance, our applicant also receives a certificate. The certificate outlines clearly that they have permission from our local government to undertake works between a specific set of dates at a specific location. That is basically their works access certificate so that they are able to show that on site if needed to prove that they have your approval to do the works. Once a corridor access request has been approved, the contractor can easily update the progress of the works. With a few button clicks, they can let you know when the works are pending to commence, when the works have actually commenced, including the date. And finally, they can let you know when the works are completed. You'll note here, if I choose a date that doesn't match the approved end date of the works, I need to give a reason why. So it could be a case where the works have been agreed with the council and suddenly something has come up that has made these works more important to be finished quickly. So rather than redoing my corridor access request, the council may say that all I need to do is ensure that I accurately document when the works were done and we can progress. Once the contractor has completed their works, responsibility for completing the permit application in Permit Manager comes back to the local government. There are several options available to you at this stage. Some local governments will choose to have a works completion notice go to the contractor as part of this works complete phase. And once that's done, you've got the option of either putting the job directly into warranty or undertaking an inspection of the works site. So if you choose the inspection option, you have two outcomes. It can either pass or it can fail. And then it's just a matter of filling in the relevant boxes, including comments which can be internal or back to the contractor and principal contact. If something fails your inspection, you need to attach a remediation due date to it. Files can also be attached such as photographs or inspection reports. The failure of an inspection will put the job into the status of needs remedial action. So this will require the contractor to undertake the works by the due date and notify you that the works have been done. Then you have the option of reinspecting the site to ensure that the works are up to your standard. So if we reinspect the site, you can see we can now choose to pass those and we will save that and this will automatically place the job into warranty. Part of the process then will automatically place a two year warranty period on the job that can be configured and changed as required. Once an application is in the warranty status, we remove it from the dashboard view for you, just to keep your dashboard view of those tasks that are still in progress and need your attention. So a few other things that you can do in Permit Manager that might be of interest to you is you have the ability to add in additional fees. So for example, if you need to charge a contractor for remedial works, you've got the ability to use the same payment processes that we used earlier to set up a remedial fee. Again, the payment can be either manually handled through your own finance department, or it can be linked into your payment gateway. You can see the notes and the messages that have been sent to you by your contractor and respond to them. Additionally, you've got the ability to add notes to this job that stay internal. So in a department where you have multiple people working on the same applications, you may find it handy to be able to write a quick note so that if you're not available, when that applicant calls back, someone else can see quickly that you have left a phone message 
and what tasks need to be done. Additionally, we have this Google Street View data available to you. So this allows you to undertake basically a desktop survey of the location. It'll help you if you're looking to see where that site is and what's around it. For example, you'd be able to see if there's a bus stop or a crossing or something that may impact your decision making as to whether or not these works can go ahead or whether certain conditions need to be added to the permit application process before you approve the works. Thank you, Jacinta. So now we come to the uh, the last part of the webinar, which is to um, answer any questions you may have. There have been a couple of questions that have come through so far. Uh, the first one is, um, what about the offer? So you're probably aware that we have a promotion in the market until the end of June, where we're offering permit access on a three year agreement, uh, free for the first 12 months half price for the second 12 months and then full price for the third and subsequent sorry not the third and subsequent years um, so that's a compelling reason to consider uh, looking at permit access as a solution for your road permitting requirements and as i say this is a, 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 sh a limited offer through until the end of june uh, which we hope to uh, cap capture some uh, some interest of it with Next question is how much time does it take for the solution to be implemented? So when we submit a proposal for permit access, we include a standard three days fixed price training, uh, implementation and training. Uh, this can be done uh, primarily over the web using Teams meetings, but we do provide training to your staff and council. And we also help you with the process of uh, communicating to your contractors the new processes they need to follow to uh, submit corridor access requests either, th either through before you dig or through corridoraccess.co.nz. So last call, any more questions from anyone on the webinar? Last, last slide. So if you need to get in touch again, my name is Richard Dyson and uh, I'm happy to present you with a budget proposal. We have metrics uh, from every council district from our service to know how many quarter access requests you're likely to receive for budget purposes. We have recorded today's webinar and we'll be posting it to our website shortly for you to share with others. Uh, uh, thank you for your attendance today and we look forward to working with you in the future.